So today, I'm very honored and thrilled to be speaking um, with, uh, with all, in front of you guys. Um, and I'm going to talk about Web3. And we've been hearing this word, this term, for, for the past few days. But we're going to be talking about it in the context of beyond gaming, beyond NFTs, beyond the metaverse, you know, beyond entertainment. We'll be speaking about Web3 and its role in the Philippine context and how Web3 will play a huge role in helping push the socioeconomic agenda of the country. So just a little bit story, you know, um, last year the Philippine president has mandated to um, push for the digitalization of the country. That means he wants to digitalize government services, records, and now it's being backed by a pending bill, bill e-governance act, which will require every government unit to digitalize their processes. And it, it, this is an important step for us to reach that level of digitalization that we aim to be. And um, maybe not a lot of you know, because we've been hearing so much about cryptos, you know, NFTs and other things, but there's a lot of traction happening within, the gover within government units about these initiatives that will push this further. In May, I was part of the Philippine delegation at the London Blockchain Conference, and we were represented by different sectors from the Philippines. We have... Um, from the national government, ASEC, um, Edwin Ligot, Assistant Secretary of DICT, one of the speakers as well, he, he was not able to make it, but he spoke remotely, um, is SEC Commissioner Kelvin Lester K. Lee. We also have a representative from provincial government of Bataan, which is one of the most progressive provinces in the Philippines, and also the head of launching laboratory, Christian Pulmano from Ateneo. So these are, this delegation was, was represented by different members of different sectors. And that is important because each one of us plays a pivotal role in making this happen. So what we did, we had a conversation, we have speeches about what are the current status or what is the current status or the projects that have been happening from their respective institutions and units and how will this impact and change the way we live in the future. So that is actually a very good thing because we don't realize, it's not often talk about all of these things. You know, the craze about this industry is all about getting rich and that, but we have to think beyond that. And I would like to take this opportunity to talk more about that. So, you know, Web3 plays a huge role, but in or just a little refresher, let's look back again what exactly it means. And of course, we're going to start off with Web1. And during that time, there is, of course, an open source internet protocol, but we just get information as users, right? It's very static. You know, you, you just have to read the information. You know, there's not like an exchange of information happening until Web2 happened, which is the current era that we have today, the explosion of social media. But the thing here is... The, the, the Silicon giants, you know, the Silicon Valley giants actually harvested our data. So we thought we're using these platforms for free, but they're actually earning and monetizing um, our data instead of us monetizing our very own. So that is when Web3 comes in. This is when users like us get to be empowered. It allows or enables us to freely exchange value and using interoperable technologies such as blockchain technology. So what is Web3? Well, just a quick refresher. Well, it is enabling efficient exchange of value where, again, users are the center. Okay, we get to be, we get to be empowered through what? Through, through transactions that is secure, safe, and private without unnecessary steps, without unnecessary parties. And it is about moving from closed systems to interoperable standards. So as you know, like how we operate as a nation, we have different departments, government agencies, very siloed. But this time, with the power of Web3 and blockchain technology, every, everything is possible, like everything can be interoperable. And Web3 is basically the realization of peer-to-peer -peer economy. This means everything will be efficient because what will happen, what I can deliver can, to you will be, will be sent directly to you without any of those unnecessary steps that we are currently facing or currently using with the traditional processes that we have. So what exactly is the role of Web3? And I would like to talk about it from the government perspective for now. Um, 
Well, there are a lot of opportunities when it comes to um, Web3 here in the Philippines. And number one is enabling policies. And as the government enables those processes, as they learn more about the technology that we have, they will be able to create frameworks you know, with these policies that will strengthen different industries, different government units. And that will essentially solidify how we do things. And as they do that, you know, there will be industries or new business models that might emerge with these new policies. And with that, we can create more jobs. There will be more opportunities for people, for, for, for Filipinos, for citizens, for our population, by enabling government to do these policies. And because we create jobs, we can become like the center of what? Center of excellence of Web3 learning professionals. And that's where we get to educate what our population beyond, um, you know, I mean, more than other countries. And because we upskill our people, there will be a lot of, you know, what we call inclusion. And not, it's not just within the financial side, but it's just um, an, an all-encompassing concept of inclusion. And this is possible with Web3. And if this is something that any government, especially the national level, would implement, you know, would enable. This will make, this will be used and make a lot of changes, better and positive changes for the Philippines. So I would like to talk about Web3 technology in the context of the then socioeconomic um, agenda of the Philippine President Marcos. So the 10 points are national reopening, infrastructure development, transparency and efficient governance, up to affordable health care and food for all. So I'll try as much as I can to deliver how Web3 can help each one of these points. But there is a common, um, uh, there's an overlap here. And in order for the Philippine government to achieve their goals, uh, the 10-point agenda, is they have to what? They have to push for Web3 technology because why? It will make things more transparent. There will be efficiency in data exchange. And there's going to be more effective governance. And that is how they're going to be able to achieve this 10-point agenda. So how do we realize this? So let's start with the national reopening. We all know that we have been severely impacted by COVID-19, not just the Philippines, but also the rest of the world. And it has, what, retracted 9% year, to, year on year in our GDP. It totally shut down our country. Tourism is down. And tourism, of course, um, it, there's a lot of industries very dependent on tourism. So how do we mitigate the impact of COVID-19 as we reopen the country? There are a lot of ways to, um, to do that. And I, could, I would like to focus on the data and analytics side of it all. Using blockchain technology, you know, powered like solutions and pair it up with um, AI, we can use all of this data that we have gathered in the past few years of COVID. Um, use that data and analyze that. And the government will be able to what? Maybe we'll, by, by understanding the data and putting it on chain, which will be immutable, transparent, the government will be able to um, study and learn the trends, the trends and the upcoming threats of whatever pandemic or epidemic that will happen. And we'll be able to mobilize the healthcare industry will, using this data powered by blockchain and AI. We'll be able to utilize this in terms of mobilization. How do we prepare for this? What are the people? How do we distribute medicine? How do we procure medicine and vaccine? So this is just part of their, you know, their national reopening where Web3 can help like, really utilize the technology itself. There is also the role of PPP. Um, so this is public and private partnerships. As you know, these are large-scale projects like bridges and other things. And there's a lot of money at stake here. And um, private entities, private companies usually take part in this in order to support the government so the, the government doesn't have to, you know, shell out money or funding and direct it to what matters most. But this is an important element of how we can... Um, succeed as an economy. And how does Web3 can actually help here? Well, using smart contracts, you know, by using smart co contracts, it automates, you know, payment processes. It automates how, you know, how we remove the unnecessary steps or, you know, the bureaucracy of it all, you know, getting different parties to look into contracts and just do it digitally and automate that. And you can use that. And you can do that using blockchain technology. And by doing that, we introduce transparency again. And that might prevent, you know, again, corruption. It may not eliminate corruption completely, but this might prevent it. And because of that, if we have if Web3 can come in and empower the PPP side of how we do things, um, we can, it will be easier to audit you know, all of these transactions and how our government spend funds and, you know, and that will just um, make it more easier and more efficient for everybody.
And people, of course, they will gain trust from the citizens. Again, driving infrastructure, or I mean, driving innovation through uh, infrastructure development. Um, we've heard be, um, build, build, build from our former president, and this time they have build better more. It's a program that actually um, in, um, pushes for more infrastructure developments, not limited to physical infrastructure, but it also contains or includes ICT development. And how does Web3 help here? What is the role of technology can bring? And this is very important. And if there's one thing you need to listen to, I think this one um, so you, should, you should take away from is this particular one. How we're going to be a digital nation is critical. And it's not about, you know, just like payments and other things. It's really creating the foundational capabilities of our country. And that will start with digital identity. You know, our IDs, right? Essentially nothing right now. It's just a piece of card or sometimes a piece of paper that you print it out. But if we created the, this digital identity and using blockchain technology, we can introduce the concept or the solution called self-sovereign identity. Everything else, every government services can be linked to that digital identity that we have. So, for example, we're trying, we need to process like um, um, documents. We don't have to go to SSS. We don't have to go to this and that. You, know, you, you just have to go to one specific platform where everything else you can process, you know, using your digital ID. It's like right now everything is siloed. Um, DFA have their own thing. SSS have their own thing because all of our data are in, in their respective storages. But once we create the digital identity or SSI, we can, everything can be accessible in just one particular platform. And this is still not happening today. And this is something that the government should look into. And this is one of the foundational pieces um, that needs to be done. It's like the digital plumbing in order for us to succeed in this um, agenda of pushing for digitalization in the country. Um, very important part. New monetary system. So, how Web3 can help with tax collection, you know, we can do peer-to-peer -peer micropayments and nanotransactions. Government can even empower or, you know, encourage people to pay their taxes by in incentivizing them. And we can use that using blockchain technology. I have to wrap up. All right, so accessible services, again, digital identity, digital registry, effective learning. And as you know, we will be, we can be like the center of excellence and we can export or um, blockchain professionals, Web3 professionals here. Um, and you know, as we digitalize and automate processes, we remove a reduced bureaucracy, and which is essentially a cause of corruption as well in the Philippines. So again, Web3 can help in that. So I would like to just wrap it up. Um, um, and I just want to focus on building the foundational pieces, and that is digital identity, digital signatures, um, digital data integrity, and uh, CBDC as well, and incentivizing citizens using loyalty tokens. These are just some of the foundational pieces um, any go our government should look into to start building our, um, our digital nation. And before, before I end this, um, because I'm wrapping it up, before I end this talk, let me just remind you again that Maybe you've heard me speak about efficiency a lot of times in this, in this presentation, but I want you to think that Web3 is all about efficiency. And that is the reason why technologies like this exist. It is because there's just only one value proposition Web3 technology provides, and it trumps everything. It's all about efficiency. Because if you automate things, remove unnecessary steps, unnecessary parties, and just do things, you know, automate processes, it gives us what? It gives us time. It gives back the time. Don't have to sit down in government offices waiting for things to be signed, you know, paper-based processes. We get, to back, we get to get back our time. And that is important. Remember that Web3 is efficiency and it prov and enables us to get the time that is important for us so we can have time for the, our loved ones, time for our family, for the things that we do, that we love to do. And remember, with Web3 technology, it is beyond entertainment, beyond gaming. But this is about changing our lives and driving the biggest social impact movement of all time. So hopefully, um, you get to learn more about Web3 technology. And thank you so much for staying and for listening.
Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, blockchain, stable coins, Metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Blockchain 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain.